Today I'm replacing our old car stereo with a 10 inch Android tablet. People have been installing iPads and Android tablets in their dash for a little while now, but it's kind of hokey. You gotta run a whole bunch of adapters and the audio quality's not that great on them. This joying 10 inch tablet is meant for car audio. This is half of it, and this is the other half. It's a regular head unit with normal outputs and volumes and stuff that your car is expecting to see. So while I'm not gonna be like sitting in Starbucks, you know, reading my eBooks on this, it's really meant to stay in the car and I don't think it'll work without that anyway. It's got all the functionality of a tablet plus all the functionality of a really high-end car system. We're not affiliated with Joying. They're not a sponsor of ours. We paid for this full price and we've never used this before. So this is kind of a gamble, kind of a test, hoping it works because if it does what it's supposed to do, this will be amazing. Currently, we have a lot of electronics going on up here. We got the ham radio. We've got the TPMS sensor up there. I want to add a backup camera and I want to add some sort of navigation so that I can see the roads we're going on. That's been a really tough point when you're towing. Just hearing Google over the Bluetooth on the old system was great, but not being able to see the maps has really been a problem when trying to navigate in cities that we don't know or are unfamiliar with, whether we're towing or not. So this kind of kills two birds with one stone. It's our maps and it's our backup camera and it's our stereo. So anytime you can combine three screens into one, that's a plus to me, because I don't want, you know, maps up here and then TPMS over there and then backup camera over here and now I can't see out the windshield. So this really made a lot of sense to us to combine all of those into one. This is our four channels amp going to our mains. It's fantastic, it's small, it's cheap, it's powerful, but it gets awfully hot before I had it mounted right underneath my head unit and all that heat would go up into here and this would get really hot. In fact, it'd be too hot to touch sometimes. With the new head unit, you can see it's noticeably shorter because it's not meant to run CDs because we don't listen to CDs anymore. So that gains me a good two inches back there where I can run this without the heat transfer to this. So that's really cool when these components get smaller and smaller. A lot of people have never heard of joying before. They're not one of the big names in car audio like Pioneer, Kenwood, Alpine, Sony, those people. They're all made in China and they focus more on the tablet style Android systems for cars. Now the big companies like Pioneer, Kenwood, Alpine, Sony, they don't have a full on Android tablet that runs full Android. What they have is something that has Android Auto in it. I don't want to go into too much detail about that, but Android Auto has limitations. You can't run it like your full phone. It locks certain things down. I didn't want that. I want the full unlocked experience. I want to be able to run any app I have on my phone on here. So that's why we went with the joying. Here are the inputs and outputs. We've got a USB cable here, a USB cable here, a Wi-Fi antenna here. This thing runs off a of Wi-Fi too, which is cool. A GPS antenna for our navigation. Um, audio antenna, car antenna, two video outs, two video ins, a subwoofer out. I wish that had two outs like the Alpine did because that's what my amp's wanting, but I can fix that. Uh, RCA left and right in, and four RCA outs here for my amplifier for fronts and rears. And that's it. Last night I wired up the pigtail. Here's our GPS coming through. So excited to have a backup camera. I'm always scared I'm gonna be backing over some little kid or back into a tree or something, even without the Airstream. Now, a lot of people want a backup camera on their Airstream too. I don't feel like I need that. Time will tell. Plus those systems are like eight or 900 bucks and I've heard they're not that amazing. I've heard the wireless features can be problems. So actually a wired, a hardwired backup camera is always better if you can. Here's what we got. 
GPS wire, antenna, the back of the head unit, subwoofer, amplifier inputs for the stereos, and I think we're good. There's room, but not much. All right, everything's plugged in. I've got room for one more video in if I ever want to add a second backup camera. Lovely, look at that. All right, it's time to connect the tablet. We've got this ribbon here that clips on the back, and then we've got these four clips that go in these squares. Now the cool thing is I can move these up or down about another inch and a half. Oh man, that's sweet. Let's give it a try and see if it works. Awesome. Check this out. Hit the navigation button. Google Maps right there. I cannot wait. There's Picacho where we went hiking. Oh, that's huge. So helpful. This is the APRS map for ham users. It'll tell me where they are. Wow, look at all these people in Tucson. This is cool. So this is tracking all the different ham users, where they're going, when they've last pinged in. We can turn that on with this too as we want. So N0JXB-9 has been driving along there. This will be really fun when we have friends out there who have these in their cars and we want to see who's where when we're doing exploration out in the middle of nowhere and we want to get back together. We can call each other on the radio and see exactly where their position is. All right, let's see how the music sounds. Awesome. Super impressed with this so far. We got Netflix on here. Any Android app you can put on here. We're not going to watch Netflix while we're driving, so don't worry about that. But it can also mirror your phone. So if you want to just completely duplicate what's on your phone, you can mirror that. This was only $100 more than this and has so much more utility, so many more amazing features built in. So I've had this installed for about a week. The backup camera is still not installed, but here are some pros and cons. Pros, the maps are awesome. The GPS is really fast. Um, it's great to have Pandora. It's great to have everything in here. Cons, it's a little hard to operate when driving. I wish I had a volume knob. It's got some contacts to go to a steering wheel mounted controller which we don't have and I'm wondering if I can modify that to work with the volume knob somewhere but it'd just be really nice when I'm not looking to just turn it down. Now I can use these buttons over here but they're kind of finicky and they don't work super well. If I hit this it mutes everything which is nice and then hit it again and it brings it back sometimes but these buttons I have to hit several times. Another thing I don't love is the equalizer. Let's see if I can get to that to show you. The home button sometimes works. Um, so if we go to the equalizer, all we have is low, medium, and high. I've turned them all, all the way down because like half volume on here is extremely loud. So it almost acts like it's not meant to be plugged into an amp. Also, I don't have a separate subwoofer control, so I can't change the level of my sub. It's all kind of mixed together. I may have to find an app that will do all that. I've got to do some more research there. Um, I do love... The Android interface, it's something I'm used to. But the worst is this volume control. So here we're in Pandora. I'm going to try and turn it up. So it's pretty quiet, which is fine. That works pretty well. But when I go to turn it down, which is what you usually want to do when you're driving, it's not doing anything. I have to go like this. Still not turning down. I can turn it up sometimes and then pull it down from there but that's distracting when you're driving and I don't want to be doing that so that's something I'm working on but it's really nice it fits really well I wish I could find a way to turn it on without the key being on too but overall I like it, but there's a couple little glitchy things I'm not crazy about. I can't get the microphone to work or the voice activation. I gotta work on that too. So do I still love it? Yes. Was it worth 350 bucks? Absolutely. 
Is it the best car stereo? Absolutely not. So as far as the stereo goes, my old one sounded way better. I could do time differentials, so a speaker that was farther away would fire before another one, so the sound arrived at my ears from every speaker at the same time. I really miss that on this. But perhaps there's an app out there that'll let me do that. I just need to do a little bit more research. Today is the day that we are installing the backup camera. So I'm going to position it in a few different places to see where I want it best, whether it's on the top looking down so I can kind of see the edges of the trailer if I'm too jackknifed, or whether I want it at the license plate about midway up, or whether I want it on the bumper to really get a good, good view of the ball. The two main things I really want to see is the ball for hitching up and for parking. I just want to see if I've got enough room to keep moving into a parking space if I'm about to hit a tree or something. And it would be really nice if I could see how jackknifed I am, but that's more of a nice to have than a necessity. So Teresa's going to help me figure out three different positions and we'll show you what they look like and then we will decide which one to go with. All right, let's test a couple different spots. Here's the first position right on top of the bumper. That'll probably be the best for hitching up the ball. This is the middle position and this will probably be the best for backing up. This is flat and then angle down 45. Then our final experiment is up here, aiming down. I think the bumper makes the most sense. That was a fun little experiment. That'll do. I've got these stainless steel button head screws to hold the camera in. And they're gonna go through the bumper, hold it in, and it'll peek out that hole. Rather than bring a ton of extensions in every size, I brought my big extensions, and then I have little converters to down convert it to a smaller size. I wish I could take a full set of tools everywhere I go, but I simply cannot. Here's a little trick I use. I need to put this nut in here but it falls all the way down to the bottom. And I need to thread it on from the bottom. It's not gonna reach that way. So I shove a little bit of paper towel in there. It takes up most of the room and pushes the nut to the top. Now the nut's right on the end, ready to grab. Pretty slick. There we go. Perfect length. Take a look at that. Almost looks factory. That's a cheap little $10 camera from Amazon. I finally got everything installed and the backup camera is working. Check it out. That is gonna be so nice to have. Couple quirky things I'm not crazy about about this. I still love it for the price but it's, there's so much glare on it that I'm gonna have to kick it out a little bit because it's glaring into Teresa's seat and I'm seeing what's ever over here instead of what's on the screen. It's kind of hard to read the screen. And the side buttons are intermittent, so I talked to them, we'll see if we can get it exchanged for another one. Awesome having maps, awesome having the backup camera, and awesome having it be full Android so we can install apps on it. We can put our mountain bike app on there. It'll navigate us straight to the trail. We can put our ham radio um, repeater book in here. We can run our APRS and see, as long as we have internet connection, we can see where other hams are and how they're traveling all around. It's going to be a really great system to have in the car. So glad I did it.